Hey guys, hello and welcome to this video. Today in this particular video, we'll be basically talking about Turbo Repo and Turbo Pack, basically both of them. And we'll also try to make a small project which can actually demonstrate the power of Turbo Repo and Turbo Pack. And we could actually see, by the way, right now at this particular stage when this video is being recorded, the Turbo Repo and Turbo Pack both are in beta. I'm not sure both are in beta. So this is Turbo Pack is in alpha and Turbo Repo, I'm not sure. So we will be trying this out and we'll see what benefits or what problems does this solve and how much fast can we actually make the compilation, right? So let's actually start with Turbo Repo. And uh, this is a very fresh and genuine overview because even I don't know how they, uh, how they, how they actually feel and how they, how they actually, uh, you know, work. So we'll both be figuring this out. So first thing, you know, we get to add, create new mono repo, right? So first thing first, what you do is you run this command npx create turbo latest, right? But can I create it? Uh, okay, so it talks about, uh, okay, so it, it basically asked me to use this particular command. So this, uh, this is the command which is npx create turbo latest and this command basically enables you to create a turbo repo, I think. So what we'll do is we will be basically going to projects and we will be basically uh, pasting this command out, right? And this will basically ask me to ask me for a, for a repository name. So let's say test turbo repo, right? This is cool. And what we want to use is we want to use yarn for this project, right? So uh, this basically contains the default demo contains two Next.js projects and i think the library is pretty much shared between them and i love this comfort you know imagine uh, you know in like in most cases right what you have is basic, basically you have a you have your admin panel you have your main basic app the main app which is client side app you might have three four more react applications in the same application right and the problem is a lot of components in all these are pretty much same so you are basically replicating code in all of your a repository so if there's a button which is same in the admin panel and which is same in the client side application what you end up doing is you end up copying the same stuff in your client as well as in the admin panel and that kind of like you are repeating yourself and that's not at all good in programming right in general like uh, so when you talk about software development you do not you try to repeat yourself as least or as less as possible right so that's avoided by this so i'll walk you through the uh, you know I'll walk you through the uh, folder structure and everything in a, in a while. So this is this is how the folder structure looks. I'll just make it a little bit bigger. So uh, first of all, let's actually start examining the package.json file and let's see what does it actually offer. So here we can see the first is package name and then we have a version and then whether it's like this is private and this, this is very interesting. So if you have worked with yarn workspaces, you already know how this workspaces work. So basically, you know, you have these folders. So everything inside app and everything without packages are considered as one uh, kind of like package, right? So everything which is app, you know, just docs, web, everything, these are considered as a single package. Similarly, everything inside packages is actually considered as a single package and they will be compiled uh, you know, according to accordingly, right? And this is actually using Turbo. So you can see uh, we are utilizing the Turbo repo as well as Turbo as in uh, as in a compiler, right? And this has already given us prettier configuration and all the good stuff which you basically need in an usual project. That's pretty much, that's pretty cool, right? So we have all these and we have uh, all these stuff. So let's quickly try to run this app and kind of like get a gist of how does it feel to run a Turbo Repo app. So what we'll do is we'll say yarn because we're using yarn as a package manager. So we'll say yarn run uh, dev. So this is very cool because this basically triggers all the development environment. So this basically triggers all the React application, all the React servers which I have. And you can see, you know, I have two two things running, which is one is on port 3000 and another one is, one is, is on port 3001. So both of them are running and let's actually take a look. So this is how the 3001 looks and this is how 3001 looks. So you can basically, uh, this is all. Right? So these two applications are being served as the same repository, as in the same repository. And uh, the fun fact, you know, when, when, when we'll be uh, compiling this, right? So if you just go and run build, right? Let's see what happens. So you have to run, run, build, right? So if we run build command, 
uh, you'll be seeing that all these builds are actually you know quite uh, you know <laughs> amazing so two wheat applications compiled in 5.538 seconds i mean that's 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 too fast but anyway if you have compiled a cra app which is create, create react app app you already know how long does it take so this is quite fast and this will make our lives very 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 good so you can see you know uh, i don't i'm not sure where you know it the output of this is stored uh let's go to apps let's go to docs and you have the pages you have the turbo which you have the all the stuff and then you have the pages uh that's cool my, my question is actually where is the compiled version of this stuff stored okay So it's a next JS application and I think it is here so we have chunks and then and then you basically say start how do you say start okay where does the things go after compilation that's the question <laughs> okay so let's actually try to dig down the uh, the documentation in order to figure this out so uh, do we have anything for build right so it depends on this outputs as this so this is you know in a turbo.json file which is this one here we actually specify what is the output so we have disk and dot neck so basically i think you know this all the output of next application is in dot next and there you see all the output compiled version of the app and you can basically uh, deploy all of these compiled version into their specific docker containers and push it to a push it to a registry and you can have all those ci dcd pipelines things going on so that's how it, it is made and you can see you know this outputs into disk and dot next the best part is you can keep adding new folders and new packages to the same stuff right and it will work as you expect it to work right so if you uh, if i just go to turbo.json and understand the schema there's like a default schema which is provided over here so we'll look at this what is this default schema saying hold on okay so we kind of need some json formatting i believe okay so this is some uh, basic uh, json formatting so this is how this is the default schema and it basically gives Oh, it uses uh, the default schema of turbo itself now so you know if you look at this line this is quite awesome so this basically uh, has the description of all all the things like how to deal with arrays how to deal with all the different kinds of folders and you know if you if you have written a webpack config file you know how complex and how how daunting it can could, could, could be to write test stuff but here i think you get a default thing which kind of covers most of the basic stuff and um, most in most of the time you end up writing less of these configurations and you end up coding more instead so that's cool i want to see what is the prettier stuff going on so there's a prettier thing right so if i just say yarn run prettier right up there yarn run lint then you have linting command and you can see this basically uh gave you all the linting related uh all the linting related uh, issues and warnings and everything right now we do not have any linting issues but if you have one it will be visible over here right so the next stuff is uh, you know let's try the next command which is a format command again there's no i don't think so there would be any issue regarding formatting but still there you go so using prettier this basically formats everything like as you would expect this to do so yeah that's cool i think this whole thing is read, uh, like this uh, turbo repo right this has been written by the same guy who has written webpack i'm uh, very sorry i forgot the name creator of webpack so okay uh Just, I think uh, it's Topis Coopers, and I think he's the guy, uh, Tobias 
Cooper. I'm not sure how, how to pronounce this name, but he's the guy who is behind Webpack, and the same guy have actually contributed or kind of like led the team who actually developed uh, Turbo, Turbo, right? So uh, this is quite cool. So you know. Turbo pack, I mean, you know, so he's the same guy who led the development of turbo pack and you uh, right now we kind of have uh, this turbo pack. It's an alpha. I wouldn't recommend this to be used in production, but it's quite cool. And uh, yeah, and it's very fast, very, very fast. Uh, I, so if you want like how much fast it is a comparison, I would recommend you to see this one. So this kind of talks about what is the speed. So, you know, in a, a usual next year. So if you see, you know, react, there's thousand, you know, with a thousand uh, react component uh, project, how does it actually behave? So when you go to react 13, this gets compiled into 1.4 seconds, which is awesome, which is quite great. Right. And if you have beat with, uh, you know, SWC, right. So with the server side rendering and all those components like server side components, you kind of get rendered in 4.2 seconds with react 12 it is 3.6 second and with next 11 it's like this kind of weird why is it okay why is it mostly comparing it to itself i mean that's weird but still i think this would be very very fast as compared to cra or any of, any of those stuff so you know would like to hear your recommendation as well you can hit you know you can you can you can give your suggestions in the description below below of course we'll We'll go through them, but this thing is fast. I mean, this thing is super fast. Code builds and build for caching is disabled right now. And you know, if we go to showcase, I mean, a lot of companies are using it. So this is kind of great. And the documentation is not very mature yet. So if you're using this, this is alpha, I wouldn't recommend for production. But still, it's not very mature yet. And, but the tool is very fascinating. I mean, I think this will have a very profound impact on the uh, web development community and the web development in general and uh, yeah that's that's it so if you're excited for the same just let me know you know and you know before uh, signing off i would like to tell you like what if you want to add another another like folder or another structure so if you see every uh, every folder or every you know if you go to the apps right i would show you that let's say if you go to docs and if you go to package json right so either if you have a build command it will be using build command there like whatever you have specified or i think it will use the default build which you have in the parent so that's how it works kind of thing that's what i think at least so uh you know will uh and these are the dependencies you can definitely add a new new project and continue going it would uh, surely work so that's it have a really great day and wish you a very happy new year i hope so this year you'll be having a lot of very interesting challenges so that you can learn and grow into something very big thank you have a great day and see you later on i mean in the next video thank you bye bye